وأقول في القرآن ما جاءت به آياته فهو الكريم المنزل وأقول قال الله جل جلاله والمصطفى الهادي ولا أتأول Now inshallah ta'ala I want to go into the third introduction بإذن الله الكريم And as I said before these three introductions are a qawaid a principle that you can hold on to if you really want to taste the sweetness of al-iman and if you truly want to taste the sweetness of ibadah the third introduction inshallah ta'ala is al-mudawamatu ala ta'at consistency upon obedience and adherence to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his messenger how important is al-mudawama consistency in what you do and Imam al-Bukhari and Muslim both narrated in their sahih on the authority of our mother Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha wa an abiha. May Allah be pleased with our mother Aisha and her father. She said that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, أحب الأعمال إلى الله تعالى أدومها وإن قل. Our mother Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha she said, Ahabul A'mali, the most beloved action to Allah Azza wa Jalla is Adwamuha, that which is consistent. The action which is most beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is Adwamuha, that which is consistent. Wa in qal, even if it's little. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves the slave to be consistent upon what he does, even if it's little. That which you are consistent upon is far greater than what you do and you leave off, even if it's a lot. وَلِذَلِكَ the poet he said, أُطْلُبْ وَلَا تَضْجَرَ مِنْ مَطْلَبٍ فَآفَةُ الطَّالِبِ أَنْ يَضْجَرَ أَمَا تَرَى الْمَاءَ بِتَكْرَارِهِ فِي الصَّخْرَةِ الصَّمَّاءِ قَدْ أَثَّرَى Go and seek knowledge, he said, and don't give up. أُطْلُبْ وَلَا تَضْجَرَ مِنْ مَطْلَبٍ Go seek knowledge and don't give up. فَآفَتُ الطَّالِبِ The most harmful thing for a talib, a student of knowledge, is to give up and to stop. أَمَا تَرَى He said, the poet said. Do you not see with your two eyes water dropping on a rock and it finally pierces through the rock? Water, a very light liquid, piercing through what? Through a rock. How did he do it? Al-Mudawama Consistency It keeps dropping on that particular spot On that, that particular place of the rock It finally affects the rock And it will finally pierce through the rock You see my brothers and sisters That hadith Aisha when she narrated it She said أَحَبُّ الْأَعْمَالِ إِلَى اللَّهِ تَعَالَىٰ أَدْوَمُهَا وَإِنْ قَلَّ The narrator The narrator Said about our mother Aisha قَالَ وَكَانَتْ عَائِشَةً He said that our mother Aisha was one She was an individual رضي الله تعالى عنها إذا عملت العمل That if she did a action لازمته She will be consistent upon that action Our mother Aisha Aisha was an individual That if she did an action She would be consistent upon what she did because she, she knows what the Prophet said. She heard it from his mouth. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us a story in the Quran. A powerful story. A woman who used to live in Mecca. This woman was mentally, in, she was not mentally stable. So what happened to her is, or what she used to do was, she used to make a knot and then she would open the knot. After she exerted all her efforts into it, she would then come and she would open the knots that she made. So all of the hard work that she put in, she will undo it again. And so Allah Taala He told us in the Quran, He said to us, "Wala takunu kallati naqadat ghazlaha min min baadi quwatin ankata." Allah says, "Wala takunu kallati naqadat ghazlaha min baadi quwatin ankata." Do not be like the woman who made the knot. With all of effort and her hard work, she did what she was doing. She, she, she was sewing, she was... And guess what? 
in the evening she comes after all morning working on it in the evening she comes and she undoes and she, un- she undoes what she was working on and some people are like that they build themselves in Ramadan the Iman becomes strong they build a strong foundation with Allah Azza wa Jalla they started to pray they learned the concept of fasting and now what do they do? as soon as Ramadan goes they fall back in what they used to do. They go back to what they used to do. Why are you worshipping Allah on a particular time? Is it the Lord of Ramadan? The Lord of every other month in the year? Well, that is some of the scholars, they used to say, Man kana ya'budu Ramadan. Anyone who used to worship, anyone who worships Ramadan, of course Ramadan goes. It's a month and it will go. وَمَنْ كَانَ يَعْبُدُ اللَّهِ فَإِنَّ اللَّهِ حَيُّ لَا يَمُوتِ but if, it's, if Allah is the one that you're worshipping, then Allah is Hay, He's alive, and He's never going to die, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this statement, they took it from Abu Bakr when the Prophet died, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Abu Bakr, the khutbah he gave was what? Man kana ya'budu Muhammad. Anyone who's worshipping Nabi Allah Muhammad, fa'inna Muhammad an qadmat. Muhammad has passed away. Wa man kana ya'budu Allah. And anyone who's worshipping Allah, fa'inna Allah hayu la yamut. Allah tabarak wa ta'ala is one that's going to forever live and real life is for him subhanahu wa ta'ala. Abu Bakr was instilling in the hearts of these people al-mudawama. We're going to be consistent upon what the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam left us upon. We're not going to change our ways. وَلِذَلِكَ Allah tabarak wa ta'ala said about the believers الَّذِينَ هُمْ عَلَىٰ صَلَاتِهِمْ دَعِيمُونَ They are the ones who are consistent upon their prayers. الذين هم على صلاتهم دائمون. What are they? They're consistent upon the prayer. They don't pray sometimes and leave it. They're not Friday Muslims only. They only come to the khutbah to Jum'ah on Friday. الذين هم على صلاتهم دائمون. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is praising them. It's madh lahum. It's a praise for them that they are consistent and continuous on their prayer. Allah tabarak wa ta'ala spoke about Nabi Allah Isa in the Quran. And Allah Taala told us, "Ala lisani Isa ibn Maryam." On the tongue of Isa ibn Maryam, that he said, "Wa usani bil salati wa zakati ma dumtu haya." Allah Taala gave me a wasiya in regards to the what the salah that I uphold the prayer and I pray wa zakat and that I would uphold give it giving the zakat for how long for two three days? La ma dumtu haya. As long as I'm alive. Again, mudawama, consistency. Isa ibn Maryam is showing you consistency. As long as I live, I'm going to be consistent on praying. As long as I live, I'm going to be consistent upon zakat. Ma doom to hayyan, and I'm not going to stop. This statement of uh, Isa ibn Maryam, where he said, Wa usani bis salati wa zakati ma doom to hayya, Ibn Kathirin, he said, it's like the statement for who? Nabi Allah Muhammad. Well, Allah said to him the same thing, which is Wa'bud Rabbaka hatta yatiyaka liyakheen. Nabi Allah Isa, who is the one who gave him the wasiya? Allah. Wa'usani ay Allah. Allah commanded me and instructed me bis salati wa zakati that I worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ma dum tuhayna for as long as I live. And Nabi Allah Muhammad is saying the same thing or the same thing was said to him as well, which is Wa'bud, worship Rabbaka. Worship your Lord. حَتَّى يَأْتِيَكَ الْيَقِينَ Until death comes to you. Yaqeen here means al maut Death. Until you pass out and you die, worship your Lord Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We're talking about ibadah here, my brothers and sisters. Ibadah doesn't have a time that you start and then you leave. The believer does it on the mindset that he's going to carry on and that he's not going to stop. Because what does he know? He knows that the actions are based on the final moments of what you do. Rawa Ahmad fi Musnadi. Al Imam Ahmad narrated in his Musnad. Wa sahahahu Sheikh Shu'ayb al Arna'ud. Sheikh Shu'ayb al Arna'ud and the Tahqiq of Musnad al Imam Ahmad. He authenticated this hadith there. That the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Innam al A'malu bil Khawatim. Actions are judged based on its final ending. For example, we know the famous hadith that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, إِنَّ أَحَدَكُمْ لَيَعْمَلُ بِعَمَلِ أَهْلِ الْجَنَّةِ حَتَّى مَا يَكُولُ بَيْنَهُ وَبَيْنَهَا إِلَّا ذِرَاءَ فَيَسْبِقُ عَلَيْهِ الْكِتَابِ فَيَعْمَلُ بِعَمَلِ أَهْلِ الْ
وإن أحدكم لا يعمل بعمل أهل الجنة حتى ما يكون بينه وبين إلا الذراع فيسبق على الكتاب فيعمل بعمل أهل النار فيدخلها. The Hadith of Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم where he told us that a person will be doing the action of the people of the hellfire, I mean the people of Jannah. A person will be doing the action of the people of Jannah. All of his life is doing the action of the people of Jannah. Just before he's about to die, he turns on his heel. He leaves all of that which he was doing. فَانْقَلَبَ رَأْسًا عَلَىٰ عَقِبٍ That's upside down. What does he then do? What he does is he starts to do the opposite of what he used to do. And then he dies upon that way and he becomes from the people of the hellfire. Another person was doing evil and corruption and crimes one after the other. Just before he's about to die, he changes and he enters Jannah. Which thing did Allah hold him account to? I mean, what was he held account to? Was it what he used to do or what he died upon? It's what he died upon. So we always have to remember that consistency is important because we don't know when death is going to come to us. When Allah wa Taala is going to take our, our soul. I want to mention a hadith to show you the concept of consistency and mudawama, ala ta'at, consistency upon obedience, consistency in what you do. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said in a hadith, this hadith is narrated from Umm Habiba, radiallahu ta'ala anha, she said that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said, man sallat natay asharat rak'ah, anyone who prays 12 rak'ah, Okay, the scholars, of course, they differ amongst themselves and they have disputes whether these 12 rak'ah Umm Habiba mentioned if it's the Sunan al-Rawatib. If it is or not, there are discussions back and forth and I won't go into that right now because it's not a fiqh class. Lakin she mentioned that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said man salla, anyone who prays if natay asharat rak'ah 12 rak'ah, anyone who pray, prays it fi yawmin wa laylatin day and night 12 rak'ah sunna lakin buniya lahu bihinna baytun fil jannah a house in jannah will be built for you Allahu Akbar Ponder here 12 rak'ah other than the obligatory acts you pray them, what do you get, my beloved brothers and sisters? A house in Jannah. Umm Habiba heard this from the Prophet's mouth, alayhi salatu wasalam. Where did she hear it from? She heard it from the Prophet sallallahu mouth. Umm Habiba, she said, فَمَا تَرَكْتُهُنَّ مُنذُ سَمِعْتُهُنَّ مِنْ رَسُولِ اللَّهِ صلى الله عليه وسلم. I never left it. I never what? I never left it. The day I heard it from the Prophet Sallallahu mouth. That, as soon as the Prophet said it, Alayhi Salatu I, uh, I implemented it. I never left it. I never went. Ambasa, who narrated from our mother, Umm Habiba. Ambasa. He said, فَمَا تَرَقْتُهُنَّ مُنْذُ سَمِعْتُهُنَّ مِنْ, مِنْ أُمُّ حَبِيبَ The day I heard it from Umm Habibana, I also didn't leave it. And Amr ibn Ausin, he said, مَا تَرَقْتُهُنَّ مُنْذُ سَمِعْتُهُنَّ مِنْ عَبَسَ Amr ibn Ausin, he's saying, as for me, when I heard it from Ambasa, I never left it as well. And Nu'man ibn Salim, he said, ما تركتهن منذ سمعتهن من Amr ibn Ausin. I myself as well, when I heard it from who? Amr ibn Ausin, I also didn't leave it. I made sure I came with those 12 rak'ah every single day. So we have our mother, Umm Habiba, radiallahu ta'ala anha, saying, I never left this when I heard it from the Prophet, alayhi salatu wasalam. We then have Ambassa who came after her, who narrated it from her. He said, I never left it when I heard it from my mother, Umm Habiba, the mother of the believers. And then Amr ibn Ausin is saying, as for me, when I heard it from Ambassa, I also never left it. And Nu'man ibn Salim, he said, when I heard it from Amr ibn Ausin, I also never left it. What does this show us? What does this show us? This shows us the concept I mentioned, which is al mudawamatu ala ta'at. To be uh, consistent upon righteous deeds and not to stop it. Our mother Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha was asked a question one day. She was questioned and she was asked, was there a particular day 
where the Prophet ﷺ used to specify fasting, I'm aware there's something special he used to do. Our mother Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha, she said, كَانَ عَمَلُهُ دِيمًا وَأَيُّكُمْ يَسْتَطِيعُ مَا كَانَ يَسْتَطِيعُ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صلى الله عليه وسلم كَانَ عَمَلُهُ دِيمًا وَأَيُّكُمْ يَسْتَطِيعُ مَا كَانَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صلى الله عليه وسلم يَسْتَطِيعُ She said that the Prophet's actions were consistency. كَانَ عَمَلُهُ دِيمًا The Prophet's actions were consistency. وَأَيُّكُمْ يَسْتَطِيعُ مَا كَانَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صلى الله عليه وسلم يَسْتَطِيعُ Who is able to do that which the Prophet was able to do. Who is able to do what the Prophet ﷺ was able to do? Yani the salah that he prayed, the fasting that he fasted, the sadaqah that he gave, and etc. Who can do that? Underline this point here, my beloved brothers and sisters, which is what? Kana amaluhu deema. The Prophet's actions were consistency. He was a consistent person in what he did. And that's something we today, as Muslims, unfortunately, we lack this quality. When we start something, we lack the quality of being consistent upon what we're doing and not give up. Time goes by, you see that we change. Another, another thing becomes our, we get attracted to something else. And then we carry on that for, we carry that, and we'll carry on doing that for a while. And then we leave it, and then we jump onto another thing, and then we leave it. And so you see a person going through 10, 15, 20 different phases, and he was not consistent upon anything. This is an opportunity, my beloved brothers and sisters, for you to train yourself to be consistent and continue in what you are doing. It's not about how much you do. It isn't. It's how consistent you are upon what you do, even if it's very little. As I mentioned in the hadith, أَحَبُّ الْأَعْمَالِ إِلَى اللَّهِ أَدْوَمُهَا وَإِنْ The actions that Allah loves the most is that which is, that which is done with consistency, even if it's little. Don't look at the action how consistent it, uh, how big or little it is. Look at how consistent are you upon it. So start something small and make sure that you are consistent upon that. Here, inshallah ta'ala, I come to an end when it comes to the introduction. I've given you the three introductions that I wanted. The first one was that actions are only accepted when they meet two conditions. Al-ikhlas wa mutaba'at al-rasul. Sincerity and following the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The second introduction, in the second introduction, I spoke about that the obligatory acts are better than the voluntary acts. And that one should not preoccupy himself with the voluntary acts, the supererogatory acts, whilst the obligatory acts are outstanding. To learn how to prioritize. The third introduction, what I spoke about is al mudawamatu ala ta'at. Consistency upon uh, righteous actions and adherence to the Prophet Allah Azza wa Jalla and his Messenger. Adherence to Allah and his Messenger. To be consistent upon that and not to stop. Now inshaAllah ta'ala, I'm going to move on to the second part of my lecture, which is some examples of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's ibadah. How the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's ibadah was like. Assalamu alaikum. If you're enjoying these videos and you'd like to keep up to date with all of the courses we're going to be running, make sure you head over to amauathome.com.